so in this so in this video we are going to discuss uh, how to solve a simple ODE second order ODE using Galkin's method and again we'll implement the same thing in the MATLAB okay so this is our example two so this is the equation that we want to solve where boundary conditions are there are two boundary conditions both are essential boundary conditions and both are homogeneous because both are zero okay and our domain is from 0 to L now so let us start with writing the residual residual would be if you construct your uh, trial solution as UH then just put in UH in your original L operator here so this is the residual and residual would be a function of X and the uh, uh, coefficients of the basis function in the uh, the linear combination okay so we impose the residual or orthogonality because we are using Gatherkin's method which is R is orthogonal to V for all V that is inside the uh, space V because we are looking for the solution in V and our basis function spans this space V okay now just put in the values of R in this this is uh, orthogonality statement and uh, just uh, separating the f and this term we write we can write it like this now we construct the trial solution something like this okay a linear combination that's what we have been doing and the derivative the second derivative then can be evaluated at like this because cj is constant this sum simply is ij double dash now know that in this video this summation this in wherever this you see this summation it is in, it is summed over all j's from 1 to n okay so we can simply write if we put uh, uh, uh here uh dash here we can write this uh, this equation like this and this is not this is just one equation or one statement now we convert it into i statement how do we do that we just uh, impose the condition that the whatever this value is okay this should be orthogonal to or uh, the our trial solution should be orthogonal to all the basis function which pass this this space v okay so here psi i's are the basis functions of this span or uh, this uh, space v so we just replace psi v with uh, this psi i in both the places and we and we get a set of i in uh, n equations where i varies from 1 to n where n is the dimension of the space v okay so uh, using uh, since this is a summation and we have used this argument we can you can simply convert this uh, into this form we have just taken out cj out of the summation okay this is nothing but uh, this this is a summation and this is another function and complete thing is integ integration okay this bracket re represents some in inside this thing is everything is inside the integration okay so we what we do we distribute the psi1 in each of this and we take the cj's out so this is what we get after this and you can if you want you can expand and see just put in the value of j and i and you just try to expand it and we'll see how does this thing follows now this can be written in this form where each aij is this and cj is what we want to calculate using these bi's now here in in this uh, complete analysis we haven't we haven't uh, chosen the uh, basis functions so uh, let us choose some basis functions okay so let us choose the trial function something like this note that these trial functions must always satisfy the essential boundary conditions because otherwise there is no point of choosing them because if you are choosing wrong, wrong basis functions uh, you are definitely going to get the wrong solution we will see we will discuss this thing in the some of the upcoming video so okay so this is our basis function which calculate the second derivative by r we calculate the second derivative because it is required uh, in this expression to evaluate this to evaluate a matrix okay note that this is just a some multiple of psi i because that's 
uh, because of the nature of the basis function that we have chosen now we can simply write ij as something like this psi j psi i uh, this inner product can be evaluated okay and after evaluation what do you find you find that this value is zero when i is equal to i not equal to j and i i is equal to j when i is equal to j it is l by 2 so this is nothing but a diagonal matrix okay so a is a diagonal matrix here so b has to be evaluated explicitly so we'll do that in the code in the code uh, everything will be calculated automatic automatically you need not uh, evaluate anything so it's just for the explanation purpose so here you can see that since aij is a uh, diagonal matrix you can directly calculate cis there is no need to invert the matrix okay just divided by the aiis so this is how we get the C's directly and this is the expression for the CIs. Okay, you can directly calculate CIs uh, uh, using this expression because because of the way the basis functions work. Okay, that's why it ca the A came out to be a diagonal matrix and we got a direct expression for C. But this is this, this may not be case for the other problems or in the uh, or other cases in which you choose different basis functions. Okay. So let's see the results when we use psi i is equal to this and the function f of x that we have used. This is, so this is this function f of x that we have used is something like this, some random thing that I have chosen. And the length of your domain is, is 2, so it varies from 0 to 2. Okay, the results when n is equal to 1. Just we are looking for, looking in one dimensional space whose basis function is sine pi x y l. Okay, so this is how we get results. So this you this is your actual this is what we want to obtain and this is a trial solution it's far off from the actual one and this is the residual so we can't reduce anything from how the residual behaves okay so here it's error and again it is, this is the residual error also the error is quite big okay it's our function itself varies from 0 point see it's magnitude very small from in so comparing that magnitude the error is pretty large now let us move to n is equal to 2 so here you see that the our exact solution start to follow the shape of our exact solution and the residual function is doing it bit don't know what it's doing so we'll try to conclude something out of the shape of the residual that we see in this example okay so he, still the uh, error is pretty large now let's go for n is equal to 4 again so we are pretty close now it's almost there it is pretty less it's in the order of 10 to 1 minus 3 but still it's a bit high so again the residual it's doing it bit we don't know what it's doing again for n is equals to 8 uh, you can't distinguish between the actual and the trial solution now so they're almost almost similar but still we have a bit of error but this is if you go on increasing uh, and the uh, order of uh, or the dimension of your space then you will definitely uh, approach the exact solution uh, and there it will uh, keep on reducing okay so let's see let's compare all the results okay from these results you can see that as we increase n the 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 solution becomes closer and closer to the actual one okay the error reduces and the residual mm, tries to flatten up some at zero uh, at zero line okay let's see in the next another plot this thing let's see this thing in another one yeah so in this plot you can see that uh, uh, as you increase n your residual start to flatten okay you try to flatten around this line around zero line okay so but there is no visible relation between actual solution and the residual so we can't reduce anything so I, only after performing some operation on the residual you get a clear picture of what is uh, how good your approximation is so it's very difficult to get a insight from just from the residual we just know one thing that if residual is zero throughout throughout the domain then only your uh, uh, solution is exact okay so in this uh, so we continue the example two and we choose different bases now we choose a basis function or some kind of polynomial basis of form this 
note that these basis functions also satisfy the essential boundary conditions this one this is a necessary necessary condition that your basis function should always satisfy the essential boundary conditions otherwise there is no point of choosing it okay you won't get exact solution we will explain uh, later that why why does this thing happen and now uh, we simply we construct aij so we are not deriving the expressions now we'll simply code them and b i is something like if you just ex uh, writing these expressions now we are solving this and uh, the actual solution now you can see the actual solution is this okay and uh, if say i is equals to 1 the order of our polynomial basis is x squared okay so it will be 1 so x into x squared so our term highest term in our actual solution is x to the power 4 so which how many basis functions shall we use what should be the dimension of our space and it should be i and i n should vary up to 2 what uh, sorry 3 okay then only if an i is equals to 3 then we get x to the power 4 in our basis function and we will get a fourth order approximation right so this is a fourth order polynomial the solution so for example solution we, we need to go to n is equal to 3 so this is our side 3 becomes x to the 4 minus l x cube okay so we expect that when when n is equal to oh, 3 uh, we should get exact solution let's see what we get okay so similar plots and uh, for n is equals to 1 this is what we get uh, it's almost the shape is almost almost the same but it's the error is pretty uh, large now let's uh, note that i here i use f of x equals to 4 you can use anything you want and the domain varies from 0 to 2 for n equals to 2 this is what we get we are approaching closer and closer to the exact solution residual we can't deduce anything from it and error we want it to be minimized you can calculate rms error or rms residual to get a picture just by seeing the error you can get by seeing the error you get something you get some information but by seeing the plot of the residual it's very difficult to uh, get any information okay but I, we don't know what this mag uh, this this numbers mean 3 or 0 0.5 we don't know okay exactly so this is uh, error function does give us some information the residual doesn't the rms values of error and rms uh, error and residual could give us some indication of how off of you from the actual solution now let's go to uh, results for n equals to 3 yeah so here we get exact solution with zero residual function and a zero error function okay let's note that this is zero residual so we have achieved the exact solution as we expected yeah, because n is equal to 3 our actual solution had a power 4 and our basis function also had a maximum power of 4 so that's why we have achieved the exact solution uh, in this case as well okay so now we'll see how to implement everything that we have studied the, uh, the two parts of the example number two uh, in MATLAB similar to what we have done with uh, the least square method uh, earlier so let's switch to uh, quickly go through that uh, code yeah so this is the equation that we wanted to solve this is a second order equation the homogeneous boundary condition that's we, we have all discussed this okay so we start with declaring all the required symbolic variables okay and uh, we assume here because this actually uh, speeds up the some of the calculation so we assume that this i not a general see since they are just positive integer values so we assume that they are real we could all we already said that they are integer but this also works so uh, note that in the real example uh, so this is for the first part of the example we have we have used the basis function something uh, like uh, let me let me let me okay so this is not uh, so the example two let's go to example two So here it is now so 
we have defined the symbolic variables this is our function of f(x) in our equation okay so now we uh, define our od that this is the exact, this is to find the exact solution okay so for to compare it with uh, we are solving it uh, directly using the symbolic functions like this d solve okay so we just input the conditions and the od and it gives you the solution okay now the solution looks pretty uh, ugly but you we not worry about that the matlab will do it for you similar to uh, what we did with the least square method we can choose the dimension of the basis function here okay n is equals to 2 here now uh, this is about the basis this is what the basis function that we have chosen and we are in ai and define something like this okay now uh, we first start with uh, calculating psi is this is the basis function we can put the second derivative here by differentiating psi i with respect to s twice okay to and construct bs from this which is nothing but minus f of f, f into psi 0 12 and as is psi into psi psi dd psi dd is the same as psi double dash okay so we have everything we now we have everything okay these are the symbolic functions of uh, i j i not so for example psi is a symbolic function of x and i not psi dd is x and i not and uh, bs is a symbolic function of just a uh, simple single i not and as is a symbolic function of i not and j not we have defined these things earlier here okay now now let us consider a and b matrix because these were this these are just single function okay of two or one or two variables now we need to consider matrix out of them so we run a loop from i is equals to 1 to n to j is equals to 1 to n and we calculate a okay we have used double here because we want we don't want a to be a symbolic matrix as well we want it to be a a a, a, a normal matrix consisting of uh, scalar values okay so similarly we can construct the small b matrix and we calculate the c using a inverse b okay here okay this is the method to solve the linear set of equations now we we have c we just need to plug in the c to form the approximate solution that we have constructed okay for this uh, you need to find out at which points do you want to plot so we divide the domain into uh, 100 divisions okay just for the plotting purpose and uh, this is psi this is side dd okay so this is these are the vectors okay not symbolic functions so we input the value of the domain discretized domain okay and i to represent the index which function that you want to uh, this which particular basis function that you want to calculate okay so ps so each column of this matrix ps and ps dd contain a specific basis function for example second column will contain all the values over the domain for the fun uh, for the basis function uh, evaluated at n is equals to 2 okay for psi 2 for psi 3 psi 4 and so on okay and uh, this is uh, just a correction because sometimes uh, you get 0 by 0 and yeah uh, this is not actually not defined for our case it is simply 0 sometimes it happens uh, zero to the power zero so you just you just simply uh, uh, correct it by using the neighboring values that's what we have done here and uh, now you once you have your c's and your ps both are the vectors now and you can calculate your your uh, trial solution now which is a, this is nothing but the linear combination c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2 and that's so on and this uh, uh, calculate the rest to which is uh, c1 psi1 double dash plus so on and uh, f of x we have used double again here and input uh, the discretized domain vector and convert it into double to get uh, actually the scalar values not the symbolic ones and ordered off to uh, seven uh, values uh, after seven decimal points and to remove the fluctuation of the Uh, because otherwise it will give you the values up to 10 to the power minus 14 and 20 to the power minus 16 and so on just i so truncated it uh, up to seven digits after decimal okay so now finally we plot these things here note that we are using double everywhere to convert into the scalars okay this is uh, what 
what uh, the final uh, code looks like and we can we can play with it you can you can change uh, the differential equation you can change the function whatever you want and uh, you can change your basis functions and uh, their orders you can using this uh, script you can play okay so let, let, let's change uh, uh, let's change this to n is equals to 6 okay you automatically update this just remove the bookmarks So this is this is a uh, solution here. Yeah. Uh, so here we have used the domain is zero to four in the example that I've shown just a uh, few minutes before. We have used uh, only the domain is from zero to two. Okay, so this is the final uh, results for uh, n is equals to six. And note that the error is pretty small in this case. You can just go on increasing it. You can go up to eight here. Yeah. So the solution looks better. So I'll upload this uh, script. Uh, you can find the link for it in the description, and you can play it with and. Uh, Play, it, play with it and you can uh, the only way to learn better is to play with this code and try to change the thing and see how things behave so I'll suggest that you download this script I'll provide the M file as well and this uh, MATLAB live script as well if you have uh, uh, MATLAB uh, version greater than 16 you can use the MATLAB live script it's better way to I mean it's uh, fa faster to code in uh, MATLAB script this live script and you can use uh, nice features like this kind of drop down menus and the live plots this side and you can write text and equations in the live script so i'll be using try to use this because it's it's easy to explain things in uh, the matlab live script okay so that's it for this video and uh, uh, we'll start uh, a discussion about different kind of boundary condition in the next video and how, how how what are the problems that we face uh, uh, in, in this kind of this, this guy recurrence method that we have discussed so far okay so that's it for this video uh, yeah thank you